Hello everybody, welcome back to another Astronomy and Python video. Today I want to go through the last challenge uh, which you can find the code for now in uh, the code directory here on my GitHub. So if we go into code and the last challenge was all about tides. So C004 tides and you can see here the challenge which was for the winter of 2020, 2021. Earth has one moon, Mars two, and Tatooine three. If Mars and Tatooine had oceans of water on them, what would the tides be like? Start by simulating the tides of the Earth moon system, then move on to Mars. If you want to have a, a stretch task, then move on to the three moons of uh, Tatooine, and you'll have to make up some values for those moons. So I didn't actually get around to doing Tatooine, but I have done the um, Earth and moon system, and I have also done uh, Mars and its two moons. So I'm going to show you my code to work out the tidal acceleration at certain points around the surface of both Earth and Mars. Okay, so I've just zoomed in a bit so you can see this figure a bit better. This is sort of the end result of my code. So you can see there are arrows showing the direction and the magnitude of the tidal accelerations around points on the surface of the Earth. And the moon in uh, this case is actually all the way to the right okay so at zero degrees along the x-axis so this is what we're going to end up with and i'll show you the code to plot our results as well at the end but before we actually look at the code we need to go through some of the maths about how we actually calculate uh, tidal accelerations so i'm going to show you some figures that i made to help me solve this challenge and they're all in this code directory as well so you can have a look at them most of them are on the readme there is one with some more complicated maths, uh, which is a whiteboard image in the working directory. It does have some mistakes on it, but that was just for me to add that little bit extra into the code. So you'll see that later. I'll explain that in a bit more. So in the first image here, we have the moon as the gray circle on the right, and the blue circle is the surface of the Earth. So you can see we have a point right in the center, and that has an arrow pointing towards the Earth labeled FC. That's the gravitational attraction due to the moon at the center of the Earth. Then there are two points, and these lie on the same plane through the center of the Earth to the moon, P1 and P2, okay, so opposite sides of the Earth on the surface. And here, the, if we want to work out the tidal force, that's just the force at that point minus the force at the center of the Earth. So you can see for point P1 on the right, that the tidal force, the little blue arrow, is FP1 minus FC. So the force at the point on the surface minus the force at the center. So because the force at point one is greater than the force at the center, this tidal force is positive, so it's pointing towards the moon. Whereas for point P2, the force, the, gravi the gravitational attraction, FP2, is actually less than the force at the center of the Earth because it's further away, ever so slightly. So the tidal force at point P2 is actually pointing in the negative direction, so away from the moon. Okay, so this example is very simple with all of the points along the same um, axis, so going all, all along x equals zero. The picture I'm going to show you now helps to generalize this to any point along the uh, surface of the Earth at an angle theta away from this gray line, this axis. So here you can see I've labeled the distance from the center of the Earth to the moon as capital R. The radius of the Earth is little r. And then I've got a point which is um, some angle away from this axis on the surface of the Earth, labeled P. And then that force FP is pointing towards the moon. The distance from the point on the surface to the moon is C. We'll need that to calculate FP, the force at that point. And I've also labeled this angle alpha because as part of our code, we'll want to split up our tidal force or tidal acceleration into the horizontal or vertical components. This next image is the same as the previous one, just with some of the maths at the bottom. So we have first the formula for the gravitational attraction at the center of the Earth. So FC is capital G, the gravitational constant 
times by capital M, the mass of the Earth, times by the little m, which is going to be the mass of the Moon, uh, divided by big R squared, so the distance between the centre and the Moon squared. So the force at the point is the same apart from the denominator contains now C squared instead of the distance capital R. Then using some trig, we can actually work out what the distance C is, okay, and that will go into our equation for FP. I've also got an equation for the sine of alpha using some trigonometry there as well, because in the next line you can see we actually use alpha, sine of alpha and cosine of alpha to split the force up into its horizontal and vertical component. Okay, then lastly here, what I've calculated is actually the tidal acceleration, which is normally how we uh, sort of quantify the effect of the tides on the surface instead of quoting a force. So the first thing I've done is actually calculate the force. So FP horizontal, so the horizontal component at that point P minus FC. And if I divide that by the mass uh, from Newton's second law, we get the acceleration in the horizontal direction. And then notice that there is no vertical component of FC. So we don't actually need to take anything away from the vertical component of FP. So we just divide that by big M, the mass of the Earth, to get um, AP, the vertical acceleration, at point P. So what we've calculated here is the tidal acceleration on a unit mass at that point P. OK, so this next diagram generalises the last one a bit more. So now the Moon, or whatever body it is, can be any angle around the, the centre of the Earth. So instead of lying along the x-axis, it can be offset at some angle, and we'll still be able to calculate the tidal acceleration at the same point on the surface of our Earth. So you can see here we've introduced a new angle gamma, and that's the offset from the x-axis, the positive x-axis. OK, so I haven't included any of the maths in this image because it's just a bit more complicated than before. What I have put in is that whiteboard image in the working files directory. By all means, have a go look at that and see if you can work your way through the logic of um, accounting for this extra offset in the position of the moon. OK, so we're finally on to looking at the code. Now, I'm not going to explain the maths here. Uh, because I've already tried to explain that. So we'll just go through how I've implemented uh, the maths into Python. So to start with, all I've done is import NumPy. I've defined the gravitational constant, capital G. Then there's this class called body. So this is the uh, moon or the body which is tidally influencing the main body. Okay, so here it just needs a name, a mass, a distance to the main body and um, an offset angle if it has one. So if we go down, there's a main class, and this is the main body which is going to be tidally influenced by the other body objects. Okay, so here we have uh, some, some of the same uh, variables, name, mass, now we have a radius as well. There's a step, and that step is in terms of pi. So if I put the step as one quarter, then that will make all my points on the surface pi over 4 up apart. So I'll get one point at 0, one at pi over 4, one at 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, and so on. So we get eight um, points on the circle. So in essence, they're 45 degrees apart, but we have to use uh, radians here. So then it just creates the array of uh, thetas, those angles, okay, for each point on the surface. And the scale there is what to divide the forces by at the end. And if we set that to the mass of, say, the Earth, we get the tidal acceleration instead of just the tidal forces. So this class has a dictionary, which is tide underscore F. That's where all the tidal forces are going to be stored. Then if we move down, we have some functions which calculate the actual forces. So force center calculates the force at the center of the main body. Okay, due to the other smaller body. So this calculates it for one other body at a time. So um, say we have the Earth and the Moon and the Sun, we'd first just calculate the interactions between the Earth and the Moon. Then we'd calculate the interactions between the Earth and the Sun. 
and we'd sort of add them together. So this would be called twice in that case, once for the moon and once for the sun. So here, force underscore center, that calculates the gravitational attraction at the center of the main body due to the other body in the system. So force underscore point, this next function, calculates the gravitational attraction at each point on the surface, uh, and that's of the surface of the main body, due to the other body. Okay, so say it's the Earth, so the gravitational attraction on the, each point on the surface of the Earth due to the Moon. Okay, so here all it needs is um, all it needs is the body class object, and it will return these two arrays. So the force in the horizontal direction, and then the force in the vertical direction. So the horizontal and vertical components of the gravitational attraction. So the only bit here that I didn't explain earlier is this um, where, where I've put fixing the sign of our vectors. And um, that's to do with the fact that if, I, if I've calculated that um, angle Vita from the diagram with the moon offset, I'll put it up here hopefully again so you can have a, a look at it. If I take the arc sign of sine of Vita, then I actually lose some information about which quadrant of the circle it's in because obviously a circle repeats itself once you go around 2 pi and then 4 pi and whatnot. So uh, we have to put sort of the signs back in. So here I've just tried to compute what the sign would be, should be, and then times the new signs by the absolute values of the force that we've, we've just calculated. And I've got a little image of, of how I um, how I worked out what the sign should be here. So you can see I've highlighted some quadrants in Peach, and those quadrants relate to uh, a, a very specific condition, which is that the distance to, in this case, the moon, times by either the cosine or sine of the angle is less than the radius. Okay, and that means they're in one of the Peach boxes. Okay, now you can see that every time we move in and out of a Peach box, the horizontal and vertical components of the gravitational acceleration of the tidal acceleration change. So the horizontal components of the gravitational tidal acceleration, that's the light green, and the dark green is the vertical component of the tidal or gravitational acceleration. So hopefully when you're looking at this code, you might find a more elegant way of, of um, preserving the signs or, or figuring this out. I couldn't come up with one um, in the time that I spent on it, so it'd be interesting to see uh, what you guys come up with. Okay, so if we go back to the code and move down to uh, the function called forces, this pulls together all of the previous functions and calculates these tidal forces, or if our scale is the mass of the Earth, it will calculate the tidal accelerations for us. So here it just calculates the force at the centre of the body, the force at all the points, it calculates the tidal forces by taking away the component of the central force in the horizontal or the vertical direction. There is a cut here, I just introduced that um, to set certain values to zero um, when I know they should be in certain cases. That was just for testing, so I've left it at zero here. And then it returns these values in a list. So it returns a list with the force at the center, then the horizontal component of the forces, the difference, so that third um, so that third entry in the list at index two, that's the tidal force in the horizontal component of it. Then the fourth entry in the list are the vertical components of the gravitational attraction, and the last element of the list are the vertical tidal forces. So then we come to the last two functions. The first one is update underscore tides and this just updates the tidal force values in the dictionary tide underscore f which was created earlier. Okay, um, This should not be called independently. This is called by the function below which I'll just show you quickly now which is tides. This is the main function you call when you want to calculate the tides on the main body due to all the other bodies that you pass as arguments. So you see here you can pass any number of bodies as arguments. So here it will just get all of the body names and join them together as a string. That string then becomes the key of the dictionary tied underscore f. 
that's where we're going to store all of our tidal forces and what all of this does is it tries to look and see if we've already calculated some previous values so say if we're doing the moon and the sun well if we've already calculated some values for the moon let's reuse those if they're for the same offset angle instead of having to recalculate them okay so that's what this uh, big for loop is trying to do see if we've already calculated some of those values okay it's not particularly cl clever though if I do the moon first and then put in the moon and the sun, it will use the moon values calculated previously. But if I swap the sun around, it will calculate the sun first and then it won't use the previous values. So, you know, there's a bit more that could could be done here. OK, so then how do we use this code? So here I've got the scale to be the mass of the Earth so that I get um, tidal acceleration out. I've got the offset of the moon as zero. I can create or initialize the Earth and the moon like so. So the Earth is the main body, the moon is the, the smaller, so the tidally influencing body. And then we have, uh, we just need to call earth.tides and then put the moon body object inside the function call and that will give us our forces. So let's have a go at running this, see what we get. So Python and then tides. So you can see it returned that list to us of those five components. So the force at the center of the Earth, the horizontal component of the gravitational attraction at each point, the horizontal component of the tidal force at each point, and actually, sorry, because we use the scale as the mass of the Earth, these are accelerations, okay? So I should have said that this is the horizontal component of the tidal acceleration. Then the uh, fourth element of our list is the vertical component of the um, gravitational attraction. Then the fifth element is the vertical component of the tidal acceleration. So although I've returned quite a few things here, all we really care about are the arrays at index uh, two and four, okay, the horizontal and vertical components of the tidal acceleration. You can see a bit more code here that I've used and it's commented out because I used to test the code. Um, let's have a look very quickly at plotting some of this data. So I'm actually going to show you the one for Mars. So we have up here in the in the plot underscore tides underscore Mars file, which again you, you have on, on my GitHub, import numpy and import matplotlib, and then from tides import main and body. So this time we want to set it up so that the scale is the mass of Mars. And that means we'll get the force per unit mass, so the tidal acceleration, but for Mars. We want the offsets here of Phobos and Deimos, so the two moons of Mars. So I've just chosen these randomly just to test it. So Phobos is going to be um, on the positive x-axis, so offset of zero. And Deimos is going to be at pi over four, so 45 degrees from the positive x-axis. So my step here is one over eight. So I'm actually going to have 16 points on the surface of Mars. I've got the radius of Mars here as well. And then I need to initialize my body. So I initialize Mars as the main body and then Phobos and Deimos as the influencing bodies. So then it's really simple to calculate the forces. We just pass Phobos and Deimos to the tides function of Mars. And then what we actually need to do is reconstruct the um, values for theta, okay? And uh, we, I use those to get the x and y positions of the points uh, on the surface, but around a unit circle, okay? So basically scaled to our Earth to make it a bit easier to plot. So we said we're only really interested with the um, components of the tidal acceleration, which was at index two and four, in the list that we get um, back from calculating the tides. So here we're just getting the uh, horizontal component U, which is the second um, at index two, and then the vertical component, which is at index four from our forces. Then we initialize our plot, our figure. I've plotted a circle for the planet, so for Mars and it's, it's red. And then uh, it's really simple to plot arrows on for the accelerations. We just plot uh, a quiver plot on top. So X and Y positions 
So the arrows start at the points on the surface, U and V, so that it knows the length of the arrow. Um, the heads aren't included, so this is the length of the tail of the arrow and the size of the uh, two components. And then um, the rest is basically just fluff, so adding a title, subtitle. Um, here I just I tried to add some circles with labels for the moons instead of trying to put text in the center of Mars like I did for the Earth version, which you can see online. And then here I've just uh, found where the maximum vertical and horizontal acceleration components are um, from the ones that we calculated, and I've put those on the graph as well at the bottom okay so then just the mars label turning the axis off so it looks a bit better and um, saving or showing the fix so let me uncomment this so that we can actually see the file and let's have a go at doing this so python and then we want plot tides we want the mars version and off we go So you can see here that uh, we've got our nice plot out, so the tidal acceleration from Phobos at 0 degrees and Deimos at 45 degrees. And you can clearly see that Phobos is the main tidally influencing body out of the two moons. Okay, So Deimos has very little, uh, if any, tidal effect on Mars. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I've rushed through some parts of it do go and have a look at the code if you have some time um, compare it to your solution if you had time to do the challenge certainly see if you can spot any mistakes that i've made because i've probably made several mistakes um, although i did do some tests with the earth and the moon system just to make sure okay and then be sure to check out the next challenge which is already on uh, my website and on github so let me just show you that which is C005 Mars launch windows. So for the spring of 2021, calculate possible launch windows to Mars using a Hockelman orbit. So this is sort of in celebration of um, the, the wondrous Perseverance rover and the Mars 2020 uh, project. So as always, keep coding and see you next time.